Whew. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Reverend Alice Reed, and I am the spiritual leader here. And I'm happy to greet you with Grand Rising, because that is our theme all year. We're looking at this idea of rising up in a grand way. And so we have borrowed that wonderful Caribbean morning greeting of Grand Rising. We have a lot of wonderful things planned for you this month. We have the, if you remember, uh, Oh My God Productions with Melissa Felipe and Z Egloff, they will be here in two weeks. Yeah, I'm really excited to have them here. They'll not only be doing the talk and the music on Sunday, but they're offering a wonderful workshop on Saturday, the Enneagram Experience. And if you're not familiar with the Enneagram, it's actually a, a system of self-awareness and spiritual growth that was developed in the er early 1900s by George Gurdjieff. And um, he developed this system of nine types of individuals called the Enneagram, and it combines spirituality and psychology and cosmology into one model so that we can learn more about ourselves we can begin to uh, heighten our self-awareness. And it also helps us in the meta. It also helps us when we are learning how to work with each other. I've been working with an uh, Enneagram coach myself. I am a seven. <laughs> how many are familiar with the Enneagram? Great. So not too many of you. I, I um, encourage you, if you're not familiar with the Enneagram, Google it. Look at the the different types, we're, we're highlighting different types in our newsletter each week. Pam's put, picking a, a different type out and sending that so that we can get a little more familiar with this. And I think it'll be a great opportunity for us to be greater peacemakers. That would be the nine personality <laughs> type. <laughs> but in being having a greater understanding of how we see the world and how others see the world and then knowing our types, we can begin to connect at a deeper level. We can begin to have a greater understanding, and we can begin to or actually continue our spiritual growth. So I encourage you to sign up for that workshop. I think it will be um, really powerful. The, um, the different types, I was going to say one more thing about it, the different types of, the, there are nine personality types, and they're grouped into three different categories. The first category is a center of intelligence of instinct. So three of those types you really use their instinctual um, intelligence to uh, walk around in the world and relate to others. The second uh, center of intelligence is heart intelligence, and those people really use their heart to relate to others and, and, and express themselves. And then the third center of intelligence is thinking. And what I found out from doing my own investigation is that as a type seven, I have, before I did this investigation in this work, I really thought I was a heart type. I really thought my center of intelligence was in my heart, and that's how I was relating to other people. But what I've learned is that as a um, enthusiastic visionary, that I really feel with my mind and thinking. And by learning this, I have been becoming more aware of my feelings. And I've had to slow down. And I've had to be gentle with myself so that I can feel those feelings that I prefer to think through as opposed to feel through. And that's my segue <laughs> into our talk this month, of the whole topic, which is gentleness. We're looking at giant gentleness, the power of gentleness to shift things, to approach things, to be more mindful. <clears throat> In the um, Native American traditions, the deer is seen as the symbol of gentleness. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah. The, and so there's a, in, my, in my medicine uh, cards deck, 
I was looking at the definition for the deer, and so I thought I would share a little bit of that with you. It's a little story. It says, one day, Fawn heard Great Spirit calling to her from the top of Sacred Mountain. Fawn immediately started up the trail. She didn't know that there was a horrible demon guarding the way to Great Spirit's lodge. The demon was trying to keep all the beings of creation from connecting with Great Spirit. He wanted all Great Spirit's creatures to feel that Great Spirit didn't want to be disturbed. This would make the demon feel powerful and capable of causing them to fear. Fawn was not at all frightened when she came upon the demon. This was curious, as the demon was the archetype of all ugly monsters that have ever been. The demon breathes fire and smoke and made disgusting sounds to frighten the fawn. Any normal creature would have fled or died on the spot. Fawn, however, said gently to the demon, please let me pass. I'm on my way to see great spirit. Fawn's eyes were filled with love and compassion for this oversized bully of a demon. And the demon was astounded by Fawn's lack of fear. No matter how he tried, he could not frighten Fawn because her love had penetrated his hardened, ugly heart. And that's the power of gentleness, that when we can in inhabit that place within us that is gentle and mindful, when we can find a place within ourselves of stillness and quiet, well, when the outer world begins to throw up things to at us that might frighten us, you know, the typical three uh, um, reactions to fear, flee, fight, or freeze, well, deer teaches us that the, we have a fourth option, and that is flow. We can flow with what's in front of us. We can be present with it. We can pause and not react. And gentleness gives us an ability to do that. It gives us some tools to work with. There's a, a great story um, from Aesop's fable about the north wind and the sun. Are you familiar with it? Yeah, the north wind and the sun are having a, an, a debate one day. And they are talking to each other about who has more power, the sun or the wind. And they see a man walking down a trail, excuse me. <coughs> they see a man walking down a trail with a coat on and the, the son says, I'm sure I can uh, influence that man to take off his coat. And the wind said, oh, no, 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 I've got this. I can make sure that man takes off his coat. And so the north wind begins to blow as hard as he can and he's blowing against the man as he's walking in the trail and his coat is flapping around. But the man in the wind grabs his coat and holds it close to him. The sun, not to be outdone, just begins to shine its light and warm the trail. You know what happens, right? He, gets a, he continues to shine its bright light and eventually the man gets warm enough to take off his coat and sit beneath a shady tree. And then the sun simply says to the north wind, it is gentleness that is more powerful than your blustery wind and action, your force. I think those are great examples of how we can begin to slow down and choose our responses to be gentle because gentleness breeds kindness. It breeds mindfulness. It creates space for something to develop as opposed to force, right? Which is, you know, in this busy world of ours where we're always moving around trying to figure out what's next and what we need to do next and everybody's, you know, trying to grab our attention and we're trying to see what we want to give our attention to. Gentleness actually is a call to come back to ourselves, to quiet down, to listen. 
one of the ways that we can experience gentleness is somatically through our body temple. We can begin to listen to our body when we're in a situation. If we're in a situation that feels agitating, how does you, where do you feel it in your body? Some people feel it in their belly. I feel it in the base of my spine. And our body can give us the cue to slow down and to be gentle with ourselves in situations where we would normally be very upset or stressed. And I, I, the other thing that I was thinking about gentleness is how, um, you know, if I'm if I decide to be fit, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of my body. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna be more fit. And one of the ways that we do that is lengthening and stretching our muscles. And I can go to the gym, right? And I can calculate the, the amount of weight I would need and I can count the number of reps I need to do and I can really push my muscles, which is pretty much how I do it, as opposed to yoga. Yoga is gentleness. It encourages us to stretch our muscles and lengthen our muscles, but in a gentle way, in a in a way where we are in touch with our bodies and we're listening to our bodies. And it, when I think about, of course, I told you I'm a seven, so my center of intelligence is around my head, right? So when I think about this, these two different approaches, I realize that in moving into a uh, process of doing yoga as opposed to weight training, not only does it help me stretch my muscles and strengthen and lengthen them, but it helps me to stretch to leave my normal way of thinking and move into a more somatic relationship with my body. Right? And when we think about being in the world and how we want to uh, grow, how we want to continue to spiritually grow, how we want to grow in our relationships, it requires us to, to do some things that are a little different. We've got a little, couple of little different things going on in our sanctuary, don't we? Yeah. If you notice, there is a sculpture behind me. This is a sculpture that was designed by our own Karen Meyer. It's, it's beautiful. And um, when we went ahead and put the monitors up, we, uh, we were able to display this beautiful um, sculpture again, and we can play with it. We'll put, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna see what we like about the altar and change it around a little bit. But how did it feel to you when things began to change in the sanctuary? Because week after week, you were experiencing the same thing, right? And then we started changing some things. We're, you know, the monitors. We, right now, the way the monitors work, we have one output, so the, what you see is what people are seeing in the live um, stream. We, we're probably going to play with that a little bit to see if we could do some other things. My point is that we need to be gentle with ourselves and each other, excuse me, <clears throat> as we move through change. A lot of times when we experience change, our first knee-jerk reaction is, put it back the way it was. <laughs> I liked it that way. Why are you being different? Well, it, we're being different because people grow, because we change. And gentleness can be that mode of approach as we experience change. We can be gentle with ourselves. We can be gentle with each other. We can be gentle with our body as we move through change. At the heart, of gentleness is that wonderful dear energy where we can bring in compassion and we can bring in kindness and we can bring in love and all of those energies are I'll call them you've heard of the slow food mo movement this is the slow growth movement where we allow ourselves to move into growth with grace where we allow ourselves to step into uh, new things with flow, as opposed to uh, fleeing or fighting or freezing. We engage flow, and we do that 
with an open heart. We do that by dropping out of our heads and into our body. David Hawkins wrote a book called Power Versus Force. And at first glance, we understand what force is. Force is the thing that you do when you're trying to shift things or make things happen or change things and, and you're, you feel like you might be going against the grain, swimming upstream, if you will. Now, power oftentimes has a similar connotation. But when we look at this idea of gentleness, there is, and, and the, <clears throat> the whole month we're talking about giant gentleness, it is powerful in and of itself. And if you look at the David Hawkins um, model for power versus force, the more we step, the closer we get to compassion and love, the more powerful our vibra vibration. He has a beautiful scale. He starts with anger and despair and desperation, and he moves up the scale towards love. And so gentleness is the vehicle that we can use to begin to really raise our vibration of connection and belonging. I have a couple of other ideas I was going to suggest to you. There was, I'm glad I looked here. There was, there's a poet and blogger, Ray White, and she writes, knowing when to act and when not to, when to speak and when not to, is the art of wisdom. And gentleness gives us time and space to access our innate wisdom that reveals our truth and the appropriate timing for its expression. Expression infused with gentleness is generally more easily received and more easily digested. In gentleness, we're more likely to fully own the power of our actions. In force, we're prone to doubt as we never really felt we had a choice. However, gentleness can help us in such situations to come to terms with whatever situation we find ourselves in. It really can be a gateway to grace. She finishes up by saying, I'm certainly not saying there isn't a place for force. Sometimes it appears the only choice. But gentleness is becoming a lost virtue in our age. It, it is this age of must have everything now, must be perfect now, must fit neatly in a box society that we're living in. And I'm simply asking you to remember that a little bit of gentleness goes a long way. A little bit of gentleness goes a long, long way. And I'm reminded as I think about this force versus gentleness that I, I had the experience of, I moved around a lot. As a matter of fact, I moved 13 times in my life. And I went to eight different schools. And one of the things that um, I found myself doing was feeling like I, it was urgent for me to make friends. You know, it's a natural conclusion for a child. My God, we're gonna move again. I better make some friends right away. <laughs> And so I would, you know, go up to kids and like, you're going to be my friend. <laughs> and what do you think their reaction was? Well, who are you? <laughs> I had the opposite experience as opposed to being able to connect with people, I, you know, by forcefully trying to make friends right away. I wasn't, I wasn't able to connect. I wasn't able to feel like I belonged. And I'll, I'll say that, you know, even today, I continue to have gentle reminders of this learning, learning to be gentle with myself when I'm in a new area, when I'm meeting new people, gentle with other people who don't know who I am. <laughs> so it takes time to allow the depth of relationship to come forward. And it doesn't come forward with force. It comes forward with kindness and gentleness, compassion, love. And so that's our opportunity this month to look at the places where we feel like we have to force something as opposed to being present with it and mindful and, and choosing gentleness. 
And as um, I invite the band and Allendale to come forward, I have a couple of questions that I want to have you consider as you move through this month. One of them is, ask yourself, what in my life am I forcing? What in my life am I forcing? Look around you and see if there's a place where you're using force. And then, where in my life am I being too hard on myself or another based on the assumptions I've made? Then, another way to look at that is, when I feel forced, does this make me more open or closed to others? And when I try to force my will on a situation, are people more open or closed toward me? Looking for those places in our life where we try to force things and where we can invite gentleness into the situation instead, mindfulness, and it can be really powerful. So this morning we're going to do a chant for you. And as we do this chant, I'm going to invite you not to get stressed out because you can't figure out the words and what are they saying, <laughs> right? It happens to me. I imagine it happens to most of us. Allow the chant to come forward and just bathe you in it. And if you happen to pick up the words, feel free to sing along with it. But just let the music carry you in a beautiful flow. And then when we're finished, rather than applauding, I'm going to come up and pray. And then we can applaud the way the Sufis do, gently, by wiggling our fingers. Let's try it, shall we? Tatsa 
just continue to resonate within our body. We know that there is no us and them. There is no you and me. There is only one. One power and presence. A presence that expresses itself so beautifully, so uniquely, so amazingly through all of life. And so as we move through this day, through this week, through this month, I know for each one that we will be dropping into that place of gentleness, being the giant, gentle souls that are needed in this world to propagate love, to create more opportunities for kindness, to love one another deeply and profoundly. And so we give great gratitude for this this space of gentleness that we are opening up, that we are consciously entering, allowing ourselves to be mindful and to be those beautiful, quiet expressions of peace. I simply let this go with gratitude and an open heart, and together we say, and so it is. And the Sufis applaud like this. Thank you very much, Reverend Judy.